Yeah, I'm in the one last year now. Yeah. We're here with Rakim and Noble from Rose Hill. We're here with the Hard Knocks team, Spencer Fairlon. So Spencer, talk to the camera, man. Talk, talk Look, to the Real Fight Club up in Hard Knocks. Hey, what? We see like all of this. Man, not understanding this things like a, a family. I, I, I've got things who's like a family, and this is the thing. Like you see, all these men who are working and, and earning their peas and that. I ain't being cocky, but I keep my family around me, and don't just think like it's just to 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 one or a set of of people. It's for all people because. Boxing transcends, but I got my main man here right here now, Darren Hamilton, who's up fighting Pete Madonna on the 18th of March for the Southern Area Light like, Waterweight title. We're looking to take that title from Pete, even though Pete's my bridge But you know what? Come the time when they're going to be fighting for half an hour, Pete, you ain't my bridge in. Yeah, I mean, you can bring all your Irishman them, I'll show you. And, and I know you got some tough Irishman them as well, who are going to be rolling down, but I'll show you. Say, we're real, you understand? And we're going to go deal with things, you know what I mean? We're gonna deal with things. We're gonna deal with things, right? We're gonna deal with it. We're gonna deal with it still. All right, then. All right, cool, cool. So, what about the hard knocks promotion? Would you say you bring to the table that no other promotion is bringing out there right about now? Listen, man. Let me tell you this now. I don't need to say to nobody about like what we're doing in the hard knocks thing because people are seeing, they're hearing what respected journalists, they're hearing what respected pundits are talking about our thing we're putting together. So, what we bring down. We bring hype. People go to boxing shows and it's dead. You go to boxing, I've been to certain TV shows and it's empty. Man, I have to try and paper it out, try and bring out people there. Number one is this we don't need to boast and say, like, oh, we got dough, because everybody knows that, right? We, we got finance. Our company's got some mad money right now. You know what I mean? Me, my business partner, Karen Baines. What we bring that no, we bring drama, passion, ambition, all those kind of things mixed into one more pot. And plus, we bring people from all ethnic warps of life who walk in, who buy tickets. Now, if you rest of you promoters are doing that, you come say, oh, you're doing that. But I know you're not. Your, 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 your fan base is man who go to the pub. Your fan base is, is for real though. That's your fan base. My fan base ain't. My fan, my fan base is young people. That's why young guys from unis regularly will come just like yourself will say, boy, can we get a talk with you? Can we do blah, blah, blah with you? Reason why, because they know, because I do things that gravitate to all walks of life. Black people, white people, Asians, I transcend religions. I got Jews, Sikhs, you know what I mean? Catholics, you know what I mean? Muslims, I got everyone who comes down to our thing. And the reason why they come down to our thing is because I don't rob no one. I don't make, I don't make 90, 90, 10 fights. We got a 90% guy, he's the house fighter, and he's gonna fight 10%. I don't make fights like that. You wanna come on my show, make sure you can fight. Cool, cool, so what? Bethnal Green sold out, yeah? Listen man, air what? This is the thing about this. The tickets only come uh, two days. When did you get your tickets? Um, this week. Monday. Right, Monday. right, right. Monday. Sunday, I'm at my mum's. I get a phone call from Pete Madonna. He goes, I expect. I signed a contract for Pete Madonna at my mum's house, in my mum's kitchen. Pete Madonna signed a contract. In my, I'm real. I'm real. Don't, don't think like, oh, well, I'm real. Pete Madonna come to my mum's house and came in my mum's kitchen, you know, and signed the thing. And then after that, I had to bounce, drop my little girl home, and I went home myself. Yeah, you know I mean, so I'm just I'm just trying to keep this thing real. No, no fake bling, no blah blah blah, no, no, no more big cars, no more Ferraris. I've done all that kind of foolishness. No more big watches, even though this is a big watch still. But yeah, you know I mean, this is a ten grand watch. But don't worry about that. But none of them kind of things. I'm keeping things real. So what future shows? What are you saying? Wembley, O2. I heard about shows in Jamaica even. Is that still Listen, going? man, that's still going on. Right. So you, you're probably you read up your stuff. You, you read buy the boxing magazine. Yep, yeah, because like. Our, our, um, our patron of our, of our hard nuts company is Lennox Lewis and Lennox is giving some bare support, bare love, uh, bare encouragement. You know what I mean? So when Lennox came to me and said, right, are oh, you going to go set up something in Jamaica? There's also uh, uh, a Red Zone Neil who started off like a Jamaican version of Contender um, and it's pretty cool. So what I'm going to go do is put a more professional angle because, you know, like... Through the World Bank group, I have to big up the World Bank group. Hard, 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 hardcore. You know what I mean? And you guys who are at university as well, if you're ever looking for a job and looking for moral support in anything, uh, uh, in the financial world, go down to go down to the World Bank and just mention my name because I get bail because the, the 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 head director of it is one of my cool pals, is one of my clients as well, who we deal with, and they they're the people that arrange financing for me. So because of that, you guys go down there and they'll open up doors. Cool. I'll definitely look into that. So what's it? He's all your fighters here? Nah, but the thing about this, these guys, these guys who graft down at Real Fight Club, we've got um, my, my, we've got other guys who are bringing through who are like, who come and just help out, who, who do this unpaid. 
you know what I mean? Because they just love boxing, who come in and, 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 and train and help out, who spar. We've got world-class guys in it. We've got, well, I've got world-class guys in it. So in order to have your real gravitation, people have to see that you're doing something. So just like you never just thought, oh, well, let me just go and interview Spencer Ferrell because you never knew about me. No, because you knew about me. That's why he said, well, let me go check it. I'm telling you, man, I'm real. Especially when I see young guys, irrespective of colour, when I see young guys who say, right, they want to try to do something. I'm doing everything to go and support them because as you see, you come to the gymnasium. You know what I mean? The founder of the Royal Fight Club is an old white boy called Alan Lacey. And me and Alan Lacey very, very close since I've been a little kid. You know what I mean? I can't say he's been a father figure to me because that don't work. I, I got my dad. You know what I mean? I never come from a broken home. But what he has, what he has been to me, he's been very, uh, 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 what's the word, stringent in saying like on things not to do. And he would say, well, I've made mistakes in this. Please don't try and make those mistakes. And this is what you should be doing and blah, blah, blah. And I have to listen because I take, I take advice from everyone. And when I take advice from everyone, then that brings a gravitas and I'm saying, right. And then we try and build because I know exactly what I'm trying to do on my team. Like you know you're doing. How long do you, you think your fight is getting titles shots, holding more titles right now? What are we talking about? He's getting his first title shot on, on the 18th, on the Southern Area. After he wins the Southern Area title, we're going to go and move on to bigger and better things. So, before, this is the next thing. Julius Francis, um, former British heavyweight champion. I mean, right. I mean, I know Julius good. I remember Julius had, like, he used to fight on Eurosport. I remember Julius used to have, like, the Southern Area title belt. And... Not nurture, nourish, love that belt, and I used to think that's some idiot whack belt, that's some stupid belt. But he said, No, re I'm respecting everything that I get, so when I get bigger things, I'm gonna respect that too. So, I in the old days, I look on the southern area title like it's some little joke title, but me as a pro, I can hold my hands up. I fought for that title three times, never won it. Do you understand? Even though I was rated in the top 10, and everyone said, Oh, you should be the world champion, blah blah blah, no, three times. Three, no one, two, three, three times, never won it. So now I realize what it means to have certain things and to and to respect certain things. Because I'm an old man. I'm not a little kid no more. I'm a, I'm a I'm a big age man. So now I respect things. He's got his first shot. You know what I mean? We're growing as a team. Me, him, Harry, we're we're grafting every day. I've been very I've been so blessed. I've been so blessed like like off his little things like Twitter. Little things like Facebook, I've got the biggest, and everybody knows this, I have the biggest amount of boxing followers and my voice is the most renowned voice over Facebook when it comes to boxing. Nobody can't test me on that, and that's the God's honest truth. But I'm saying, right, well, how do I turn that into pound notes? And I've worked that out to make that into pound notes because you guys listen to my things. I'm saying, right, come to my thing, see 50 50 fights, and that's what you're getting. It's true, it's true. You're a positive character, so... That's when you know boxing isn't had too much light shone in it by the media. What do you think of the boxing community, from amateurs, professional, boxers, promoters, to fans? What can we do to get the media to shed more light on us, to look at our sport with more light rather than push it under the mattress all the time? No, the only reason why boxing has been pushed under the mattress, yeah, is because people's attention span is very, very short now. Now, if you're giving people, uh, um, uh, if you're, look, just like, I, I can tell you this now, Floyd Mayover and Manny Pacquiao, is a great fight because they're two guys at the top of their game. That's why people want to see it. They're saying, oh, that fight should be happening. Right, but you can go down less a level. You can have the number one contender against the number one, against the, against the number two contender, and you can think that's a fascinating fight. Then you can go down a level. You can have the British champion versus the European champion. Then you can go down a level. You can have the Commonwealth champion against the British champion. You can go down a level. You can have the Southern Area champion versus the Midlands Area champion. You can go down a level. You can have the British Masters champion versus a guy who just came out of, of the ABA. He's had a couple fights now and think, rah, well, he's a prospect. And, and then you make sound fights. Maybe you can't make always 50-50 fights. But you know what? If you can't make 50-50 fights, do your best to make it. Maybe it could be a 45-55 uh, fight. Maybe it could be a 40-60 fight. But don't give us um, fights that are so, like, you just know who's going to win. So then people can say, I ain't going to watch this no more. You can't tell me, right, you're a boxing fan, so you can say, well, maybe I'm going to watch it. But you ain't going to watch something. But you give something where people want to know you, you, you enjoy the fans. The fans don't say they ain't going to get robbed. Fans don't say, right, I'm coming out to see something. Then that hits newspapers, then people are going to be interested. And we need more characters inside of boxing. When we've got the characters inside boxing, 
when you've got more character inside boxing, then that's when people can say, yeah, boy, maybe they got something. But you look at most of these promoters now. You know what I mean? They're all fat, out of shape, can't dress, can't talk, can't relate to the young people now. And that's the thing, that's why the game's like. Very important. Character, right. Character's definitely very important as well. You know what I mean? It goes with it. And another thing what I realised as well with these promoters as well and, and boxers as well none of them want to take risks that's another reason why you get these dull fights these are uh, these um, 90 10 fights because I know what to take risks boxers don't want to fight anyone who they think that they're going to lose against uh, yeah. and, and promoters don't want to put their fighters in with people that they think they would lose against so that, that's what makes hard knocks very unique in the, in the respect that they don't, they don't mind taking the risk and, and, it, and putting on 50 50 fights 50 60 fights so I'm saying uh, <laughs> You 